Shalom in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I'm Israel Christian. Welcome to Green Pastures, especially this segment I've tagged Marriage Tonic. Today we are looking at the eighth ministry of marriage, which can make our marriage work. And what is that? The ministry of raising godly offspring. As a husband, you must realize that God has given an assignment to minister to your wife. And as a wife, you must discover that God has given an assignment to minister to your husband. May you not fail God. Today, I want to read from the Bible. Malachi chapter 2, verse 15. It says, But they did he not make them one, having a remnant of the Spirit. And why one? He seeks godly offspring. Therefore, take heed to your spirit and let none deal treacherously with the wife of his youth. Hallelujah. Now, according to the passage above, one of the reasons why God joins a man with a woman in the holy estate of marriage is for them to join hands and raise holy seeds for him. Take note of that. Ministry of raising holy seeds for God. It's been said earlier that marriage is not a baby-making enterprise. But it remains a fact that marriage is the only biblical and acceptable way of procreation among human beings. God is not just seeking offspring from us, but he wants us to raise for him, according to that passage, godly offspring. This shows that God is not just talking about giving birth to children, but about raising children that will be in the fear of God, and I will be nurtured for the Lord. Couples must therefore cooperate with each other to train their children. Unfortunately, today, many couples have failed God in this respect. Rather than joining hands to care and nurture their children, it is a case of one building up and the other pulling down. This is indeed a serious problem in many marriages. Some couples love their children to the extent that they cannot discipline them. That is very wrong. Between January and June 1992, I served as um, a weekend pastor in a village not far from Obosho town. One Saturday night, I visited one of the houses. And as I was approaching the door, I had a woman abusing someone at the backyard. And several people were appealing to her to take it easy. On reaching there, it was the church women choir president who was abusing and cursing her husband. And when I inquired what caused it, I was told that their son, a boy of three years old, abused the mother and the mother disciplined him. The boy went ahead to report to the father. And the father came to beat the wife in the town. He said, haven't I warned you never to beat that boy again? Many husbands are like that. There is no better place to train our children than in the ministry of marriage. Not in the church. Not even in the school. It is a shame that some parents today have delegated their God-given ministry to the teachers at school. And this is very, very ridiculous. Because a parent can say, when a child misbehaves, I will report it to your teacher. When you are supposed to be the first teacher that that child must fear. No one is as irresponsible as a parent who neglected his or her ministry of raising godly offspring. Let me add here that as couples, we must fulfill this ministry. We must not allow our children to separate us. It is not an overstatement to say that children are intruders into marriages and they will soon leave when their time comes, when their period expires. The boys 
will leave to marry their own homes, and the girls will leave to their own husband houses. Why should you then let your necessary intruders cause disaffection between you and your wife? If your children succeed in separating you, when they leave the two of you behind, hey, you will have a serious problem to relate with each other. Therefore, ensure that you don't allow these children to separate you. Children are just supplements. Let them enjoy their stay when they are with you. Join hands together to train them. Don't allow them to inculcate bad behavior into their life. And don't give them room to behave anyhow. God expects you to raise for him godly offspring. May you not fail God in Jesus' name. Amen and amen.